want to welcome you all to our risk analysis and project management class. Um, I hope you find it interesting. Uh, the textbooks are, um, uh, I think, special in the sense that uh, they really do a good job of presenting uh, the situation of risk management. Um, I want to go over the uh, session and week outline first so you understand where we're going and what we're going to do and the work we're going to accomplish. We got 12 weeks and I've broken the topics down into 12 topics. The first one, the major area introduction and the overview of the course and then we'll go into looking at the processes and practices of the risk analysis. And then we'll start a section on risk management techniques and really start looking at the different techniques of uh, how to do it by interviewing, by planning meetings, by looking at uh, probability concepts, risk, risk practice, documentation in week three, and then it goes on and on. Also, I want you to apply this. I want you to get it in your heads. I want you to think about it. And in week three, we'll uh, issue out a case study. That'll be assignment one. And, we'll, and there'll be two weeks before um, you need to present the answers to the questions at the end of the case. So you'll get a case and you'll go through it and then you'll submit, uh, you evaluate the questions and submit in week, week five. Week six, we got a midterm, that's a case study. And then you're going to have that for only a few days. But it's a good case study and you're going to respond to the questions and have those in by August the 3rd. And then we'll go in in week eight to uh, case study number two, um, which is going to be very interesting as well. And there'll be two weeks before the, your response to the questions are due on that one. And then in our final uh, exam, that's going to be another case study. And these are all case studies to do with risk analysis. And on the final case study, you'll have a couple of days uh, to get that in, a little more in a few days to get that in. and. Um, and we'll see how you're doing in the earlier cases and if we need to adjust the timing or anything like that in these cases we'll do that. Um, the uh, uh, text reading assignments um, they're on the side there as well as uh, I've uh, also uh, added a text PMI practice standard which I think is uh, an excellent one. It's uh, it's uh, straightforward, easy, but it also gives you the presentation based on the um, a standard of practice uh, that's endorsed by PMI. And that'll give you a perspective too. And also, as we walk through these 12 weeks uh, in the um, in instructor's presentation, I'll go through and, and walk through uh, from a different perspective on risk and so that you that you're able to see it from a couple of different perspectives different dimensions and that you can get comfortable with uh, doing your risk analysis uh, identifying risks and how you approach them and how you rank them evaluate them select a strategy for them and um, and and then decide what you're going to do with them you're going to live with them you're going to mitigate them you're going to try to get a, avoid them uh, how are you going to handle that and risk is probably one of the hottest topics that gets project managers and projects in trouble um, if they're not not just done once like planning up front or anything like that but uh, you do your initial risk assessment and then you got to constantly periodically during the course of the project you review uh, your risk assessments and you look at your risks and you see if any of them are changing probabilities increasing decreasing new risks arising risks have gone away or things like that nature and you make sure that uh, you're dealing with your risks and, and uh, um, making sure that you keep your project uh, out of trouble and for this week week one our topics are going to be introduction as i said and then there's three topics out of pritchard in chapters one, two, and three, risk management practices, concepts, and the risk management structure. And then in uh, chapter one out of the PMI practice standard, I'd like you to take a good look at that. The way I like to approach these courses and, and uh, the, the way I want to make sure that I, I address each of your needs is that uh, I look at project management and I, look, and I know that some of you are project managers, some of you have got all different levels of experience or exposure to um, projects and project management. And so uh, I want to make sure you understand that the way I'm 
looking at this course and delivering this course is that no matter where you fall on, on this spectrum, from no project experience, from being in a project team or a project office or a project manager, or actually having large projects or, or being associated with a project management office, uh, this course will address and help you uh, become far more skilled and qualified and capable of managing risk, identifying risk, and, and taking care of risk and, and keeping the project out of trouble. Just briefly to give you an overview, to give you some perspective, um, this flow diagram basically is a shows a process of how we approach risk, how we uh, approach risk management, um, how we look into it, we start planning how we're going to do our risk management, then we want to identify the risks and, and actually from the beginning of the beginning of very pl of planning when we're doing our project charter all the way through the WBS through uh, defining tasks uh, from developing a network by deciding which tasks are going to be done first, which ones can be done, which are constrained, whatever, uh, through that whole process, through uh, uh, putting your network into a Gantt chart, putting it on a timeline, um, loading your resources in there, leveling your resources, and uh, starting to build your, your cost structure up, your should cost for your project. Throughout that entire period, you always make sure that as you identify some uncertainty or you believe you've identified a potential risk or anything like that, um, you you put it on a list and you you set down and and uh, and you add it add it to a list. You don't worry about what the probability is or the impact or anything like that. What you want to do is capture all these potential risks, and then after you get through doing your planning as far as uh, getting your schedule and resources loaded and, and uh, you build up your costs and all that. Then before you present your project plan for approval and acceptance and authorization, you go through your risk management processes and you take a look at a, all these risks you identified and you start doing some qualitative analysis or quantitative analysis. You look at the, the risks that are starting to uh, come out of the process of that list you put together, which one are significant, which ones are the ones you're going to track, which ones are you not going to track because the probability or the impact is so small that you just say, hey, I'm going to, I'll go observe it and all that, but I'm not going to go through any uh, major process of evaluation as far as impact or, or risk mitigation or avoidance or anything like that's going to be. And then you, and that's part of planning your risk responses. And then as you have come together with your risk management program, your risk management plan, um, you continually throughout the project uh, monitor and, and, and control your risks, just like you monitor and control costs and, and your schedule and, and also uh, getting the work, uh, the performance of the work done. When we talk about risk, uh, the things that are really relatively important about risk is what is the the severity of the impact you know how if this if this risk occurs if this risk event occurs this trigger this risk trigger occurs what is the impact to the project is it a severe impact is it catastrophic is it low impact is it in, almost inconsequential and then we also take a look at the probability of it occurring um, Will it uh, occur in the next uh, a few days? Can is there a probability that this occurrence is like 10% or 20%, or is there a 90% or an 80%? And sometimes we we it's very hard for us to um, assess what that probability number is. And so quite often what a lot of project managers do is they just figure out, hey, is it above or below 25%, 50%, 75%, 100%? Uh, and, and, and often it's very smart to bring in some of the subject matter experts that will be working on the project that know some of the areas of the complexity or technology or whatever and make them a part of the whole process. And then when you have a risk, then there, the two things is shown on this slide that we really want to accomplish is we want to figure out how severe is the impact? Is it an impact on cost, on schedule, on quality or performance? How 
big an impact is it going to be? And then we want to know what the probability uh, of the occurrence is going to be. If we have something that's got a re it's going to be really severe, but the probability of that occurring is like 1% or half a percent or almost nil, uh, we may decide to, that we're not going to do an awful lot about that. So these are the kind of decisions and the kind of thing, thought processes you want to go through as we go forward. Okay. Another way of looking at it is uh, um, looking at a probability impact matrix. Okay. You look at your impact and you break it into three categories. This is almost identical to what you were just looking at. But now we go vertical and go from impact, we go from the top to the bottom, low impact, moderate, high impact. And then we look at the probability going across low, moderate, high. And then we try to figure out in, in which one of these nine quadrants uh, well, they're not quadrants, but nine sectors do we want to uh, um, rate the risk? And that's another way, uh, another way of doing it. And what I'm showing you right now is I'm just giving you a brief look at how we're going to go into risk and deal with risk. And you'll get into these areas far and far more depth and far, far greater understanding and, and perspective as we go through this course. Okay. And this is a fault tree. I just want to show you that um, that we will go through decision trees, fault trees, Monte Carlo techniques. We'll be going through all the techniques uh, as we go through the course. And this is a this is an interesting one just to study it. The qualification of a fault tree, and and this is looking at a crash at a main road, uh, main road junction. And you're looking at uh, you go down, and you're looking at uh, the possibility of having a car at the main road junction. And there's a car that uh, on the on the side road that fails to stop. Okay, now you got to have both of these situations, and uh, and then you establish a probability of that occurring. And then uh, the car at the main road junction is either there or it's not. If you don't have it, you don't have an issue. But if the car is there, then we got to think about that other car on the side road that fails to stop, and we break that down to the. Uh, that car on the side road could a driver did not stop or could not stop and we break that down and decide how we're going to look at that and then we break each one of those down uh, the did not the driver did not stop driving too fast too ill vision obscured whatever and we uh, take a look at that fault tree analysis on the other side we say the driver could not stop. The road was too slippery, brake failure, tires worn, or anything like that. And this is some of the thinking and the way we break things down. And this is an example of how we would break it down in a fault tree. Okay. When we get through with uh, week one, then we're going to, it's going to give you a heads up on week two so we can tie things together. I want you to have the perspective. And in week two, we're going to look at uh, risk management techniques. And we'll go through four chap with three chapters in Pritchard with a, a going to the appendix, uh, and that's expert interviews, planning meetings, basic probability context, and risk practice methodology, and also as a chapter in the PMI practice standard we'll go through. Okay, so uh, thank you very much. Have a great week. Uh, don't hesitate to send me an email, give me a call or whatever. I am going to set up office hours. You'll see the schedule for it. And if you want to get on there and we want to have a conference or anything like that, we can do that. And we can also, if there's any questions about any of the subjects, uh, you just let me know and I'll set up some times uh, that we can get on to collaborate on Blackboard and we can actually have a session uh, on the internet where we're all talking and we can we can present our desktops or anything we want as we go forward. You have a great week now and um, looking forward to uh, uh, working with you throughout the, our course.